Thank you very much, Wasim. Um, we're going to gather the questions um, at the end for the panel. Um, I'm just a slight change in running order. I'm going to call now on Parik Brennan, who's the Sustainability Development Manager for BIA, to talk to us about Origin Green. And uh, over to you, Parik. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks, Connor, for the introduction. Uh, delighted to be here this afternoon. What I'd like to do, I suppose, is over the next 20 minutes or so, just give you a quick overview uh, of the Origin Green Sustainability Program. Many of you are already well familiar with it. Uh, so there's, I suppose, just three things I'd like to focus in on. First of all, the marketplace drivers. Why have we developed Origin Green in the first place? Why do we feel it can create a point of difference for the Irish food and drink industry? Then what we've done since launching Origin Green. So how does Origin Green now work at farm level? How does it work at food company level and what progress and what impact are we actually seeing from the program over the last number of years? And then finish off a little bit about how we're communicating uh, the program internationally to customers uh, across Europe and further afield. The reality is when you look at marketplace drivers is that the Irish food and drink industry is highly export oriented. Last year we exported food and drink products to 175 countries around the world. And I suppose given that export orientation, anything that's happening in the global market environment has potentially a major impact on our industry. And I suppose when you look at one of the biggest changes that we're seeing internationally over the last decade or so is the focus on how we produce more from less. And that's really been driven by the fact that by 2050, we're going to have an extra 2.4 billion people living on the planet, which are going to be a need to eat more food in order to survive. And I suppose. From a selfish point of view, you could say that's a wonderful opportunity for the Irish food and drink industry, and indeed it is, because they're going to need to eat more meat, they're going to eat more dairy products, and that is a great opportunity. However, the reality is that globally, we have to adjust and live with the challenges of climate change. We have a finite amount of land available globally in which we can grow food products. We have a finite amount of resources like water. By 2030, two-thirds of the world's population could be living under water stress. So the reality is we face a challenge about how do we produce enough food to feed a population of 9.7 billion people by 2050. And I suppose from an Irish point of view, what we've noticed, given that background then, is increasingly you're seeing leading customers across the globe set out 5, 10, 15 year strategies about how they're going to improve the sustainability of the supply chain. Whether that's as a retailer, a food manufacturer, or indeed a food service company as well. And typically what they're doing is they're setting commitments but what they want to achieve in terms of environmental impact, enhancing livelihoods, and areas like health and well-being as well. The one common factor that we've noticed among all of these strategies is that these customers are highly dependent on their suppliers if they're going to achieve those targets. So they're not going to achieve them on their own. And we see that as offering an opportunity for the Irish food and drink industry to say, well, we can help you achieve those targets, and in doing so, build a stronger business relationship with them. Why do we think that? We think that because we feel we're at a great starting point. We're all familiar with, and we heard it from the Minister earlier on this morning, about how low our carbon footprint is. The reality is that European studies show we have the giant lowest carbon footprint for dairy in Europe and the fifth lowest carbon footprint for beef. What that tells us is how we produce here stacks up really well from a footprinting point of view. You look at another issue like water availability. Globally, water stress is a massive issue, and agriculture uses 70% of the world's fresh water. No surprise to any of us here, the level of water stress in Ireland is 0.2%. If you add it in, having too much water would be probably 99.2%. But the reality is that globally, water scarcity is a massive challenge for us, and we have an abundance of it here. Likewise, if you go somewhere like the, the Far East, and we're hearing about it in Beijing and Shanghai at the moment, Air quality is a massive, massive challenge. Figures from the World Health Organization would show that Ireland's outdoor air pollution is as low as you see anywhere in the world. So the environment and the air in which we produce our food products are really, really good. And they're all great starting points. And when we speak to customers about Ireland, the perception is pretty much like you see that image behind the screen there, green grass, outdoor fields. But more and more customers are saying to us, well, you know what, that picture is not enough. You have to provide us with the facts and figures and prove to us that these credentials actually stack up to be a sustainable system, and more importantly, show us what you're doing to improve your performance over a period of time. And essentially, that's where Origin Green came about. We wanted to develop a structure that allowed us to build those facts and figures, and as an industry, improve our performance over time. 
When we launched Origin Green in 2012, we launched it very much as a business-to-business -business initiative. The idea was that Origin Green could work with the customers who are setting the targets for their supply chain and help them achieve some of the targets. And in doing so, build that stronger business relationship with them. Origin Green very much works on an evidence-based approach. So we've heard, as we've heard this morning, companies sign up to the sustainability charter and farmers participate in quality and sustainability schemes. All the time focusing on building facts and figures, setting targets and driving improvement. When we launched Origin Green in June 2012, we set ourselves four conditions for success. First of all, we wanted Origin Green to be a national program. In order to be a national program, we had to get every farm and every food manufacturing business signed up to the sustainability agenda. The second condition was we needed to be sure we're measuring what mattered. We could measure till the cows come home. If we're not measuring things that can make a difference, we're not going to improve. So that was a <coughs> key driver for us. The third condition was, from a credibility point of view, everything we did had to have independent accreditation or verification attached to it. It wasn't going to be enough just for board B to say it. We had to have that independent verification attached to it. And the final driver then was, and I suppose ultimately this is what Origin Green will be judged on, is how can we identify best practice, how can we identify technologies and innovations that will drive improvement, that will drive impact across farms and across food manufacturing business. As I said, there's the two elements to Origin Green. The first is the farm level, and really what the farm level element of Origin Green does, it builds on a quality assurance infrastructure we've had in place for many years. That's been looking at traceability, health and welfare, and food safety. Origin Green takes all of those measures and builds onto them assessments in relation to greenhouse gas emissions, energy efficiency, water efficiency, biodiversity, and the whole socio-economic aspect of farming in Ireland as well. So broadening out and deepening the scope of what we're assessing across farms that are part of our scale. All of the work that we do uh, at farm level to Origin Green has accreditation attached to it. So the fact that we undertake a carbon assessment on every single farm we visit, that carbon assessment is accredited by the Carbon Trust in the United Kingdom. All of our farm work is accredited to ISO 17065. So there's a credible level of robustness attached to all the assessments that we undertake. In terms of the scale of what we've achieved and the ambition to get every farm involved, we currently have 45, nearly 46,000 beef farms that are part of this program. And each of what, every one of those has been assessed on all of the measures that I looked at earlier on and in, individually being carbon footprinted as well. We're currently working our way through the 18,000 dairy farms that are in the country. Currently about 13,000 of those dairy farms have signed up to the Sustainable Dairy Assurance Scheme. And by this time next year, all primary agricultural sectors will have a similar sustainability assessment built into it. The fact that to date we've done 90,000 carbon assessments on farms across the country in itself leaves us in a lead that is not matched by anyone else. And it gives us a credibility that's really important to us when we go communicate in the international marketplace. I'm not going to go into detail about how the assessments take place, but essentially the author uses a handheld device to collect all the information on the farm. That information gets directly put back into our database and is supplemented with the farmer's permission with two sets of information from other databases. So the Department of Agriculture's AIM database, which covers every animal and every farm for every day of the year, gets brought into our database. Likewise, the Irish Cattle Breeding Federation, we get lots of productivity information from them. That gets pulled into our database, gets run through our models, and we end up with an indicative performance for each farm. And the idea of that indicative performance is to give the farmer an idea of where they currently perform. So what is their carbon footprint and how does it compare to the average? Is it excellent? Is it below average? But really the key focus on that feedback report is, well, what are the elements that drive the carbon footprint of my farm? What are the day-to-day -day management practices that make a difference? And we rank the farmer on a scale of 1 to 10 for each of those. And the final part of that feedback report then says to the farmer, well, if you improve your score for any of those areas where you're currently six or less by a point, what difference would it make? What difference would it make in terms of reducing your footprint, but more importantly, what difference would it make in terms of the financial performance of the farm? And that's really the next stage of why we're trying to, where we're trying to get to with Origin Green is how can we use the data we're collecting to drive performance? The reason we're focusing on the measures that we are is our measures that typically they will reduce emissions but it'll also make the farmer more efficient. 
And really the message that we're trying to zoom in on is practices that make the farm more sustainable, make it more efficient. Therefore, trying to make it as tangible as we possibly can uh, for farmers. So as part of that rollout, we've developed a, a software tool called the Carbon Navigator with Chagas, which allows the farm to set targets and see the potential impact of reaching those <coughs> targets. The potential impact from a financial point of view and an environmental point of view as well. That's how we're trying to roll out the program at farm level. At company level, it's all about getting verified members. Verified members with plans that have been approved by the SGS group uh, is what the focus is at a company level within Origin Green. Since we launched the program, we now have currently 122 fully verified members of the program that are implementing their plans over a three to five year period. We've been delighted, I suppose, with the level of interest we've had in the program. We've had, what, 474 companies that are currently registered. 122 of those are fully verified members. A further 159 have draft plans developed and are refining those plans. And then there's 190-odd that are developing their first draft of a plan. But those 122 companies account for 85% of the food and drink exports from Ireland last year. So we've seen a steady development in the proportion of our exports that are coming from Origin Green members, from 21% in 2012 up to 85% last year. So a, a solid level of progress, and I suppose our ultimate ambition is that we get 100% of our exports coming from companies that are verified members of the program. And really what we do is we work with companies to develop a plan that's at least three years in duration that includes measurable targets in three areas. Includes measurable targets in relation to raw material sourcing, in relation to energy, emissions, waste and water, and in relation to social sustainability, so the health and nutrition attributes of a product, the company's role in its local community, and what it's doing in relation to employee wellbeing. They're the planks of every single plan, but each company develops targets that are relevant for them under each of those headings. And what we try and do through that process is we help the companies as much as we can, whether that's through workshops or feedback reports or one-to-one -one support, or an online course that we've developed through our online Origin Green platform, we try and work with companies as much as we can. For example, since we launched the program, we've provided more than a thousand feedback reports to companies that are part of the program. So we'll help and we'll work with companies through the process of developing, refining, and indeed implementing their plan over a period of time. We're three years into the program, and we felt that it was time, and the time was right, I suppose, to start demonstrating how far we've come and the progress that we've made. So earlier this month, we launched the first Origin Green Sustainability Report. And really, it's designed to, to mark a line in the sand to say, well, how far have we got in the first three years? And then when we report annually from here on in, what level of impact and what level of progress are we seeing coming through in terms of the program itself? So for example, at farm level, what we've tried to do in the report is give an idea of the range of the carbon footprint across different enterprises, whether it's dairy or beef. But what we're also zooming in on is the potential for improvement. For example, if we were to move every farm that has a higher than average carbon footprint to the average, we'd save one million tonnes of CO2 every year. That's a massive prize, a massive target for us to aim for. And the report tries to go through the potential for achieving that level of improvement. So there's a series of farmer case studies outlining what these farmers have done in terms of changing their practices that have made a difference and have reduced their footprint over time. At a company level, what the report tries to do, I suppose, is go into the detail of the types of raw material sourcing targets that have been made and the cumulative total of them. So, for example, among the 122 members, they've set 164 raw material targets. And by the end of 2017, we'll have 6.5 billion litres of milk coming from farms that are members of the Sustainable Dairy Assurance Scheme. So that's the sort of detail we're now able to start providing around the scope of Origin Green. We also have a series of case studies like the Little Milk Company, or Bewley's and their Fair Trade Coffee, or Glan B and their ambition to have 100% sustainable dairy ingredients by 2020, Marine Harvest and the first site to be ASC certified in Ireland back in, the, in just over a year ago. So highlighting examples of initiatives that are taking place and what impact they're having. Likewise, from a resource point of view, looking at energy. For example, by the end of 2014, member companies had reduced energy use per unit of output by 11%. By 2017, that figure would be 16%. In the meat sector alone, they've reduced energy use per unit by 26% by the end of 2014 relative to the baseline. And it's about putting, I suppose, figures like that are about putting substance behind what Origin Green is all about, and being able to communicate those clearly 
in the marketplace. Likewise, in terms of examples there, key packs saving nearly a million litres of fuel oil. Dairy goal reducing greenhouse gas emissions by nearly 3,000 tonnes through the use of an anaerobic digester. They are the sort of examples that make the programme tangible and highlight what the industry is doing very, very clearly. You look at waste. In terms of waste to landfill, we've seen 38% less waste go to landfill in 2014 and 14,000 tonnes of less general waste being generated. So again, very substantial, very real figures for what's happening there. And I suppose one element of waste that we're seeing coming through a little bit more clearly over the last while is the area of food waste. I think a lot of companies have food waste. So what we've been trying to do is team up with initiatives like the Be A Food Initiative that really takes what's perfectly good product from a company, gets redistributed to charities and local groups in a given community to benefit the local community and also provide an outlet for that product for the company that delivers on some of their CSR commitments but also reduces waste within the business. So there's a logical benefit for tying up there. And really, the next stage for us in Origin really is what are the initiatives that we can tie in that can benefit member companies and benefit the reputation of the program uh, overall. The other area then in terms of social, we've seen 208 uh, social targets being set, 132 community-based targets, 27 health and nutrition, and about 49 employee wellbeing. So again, real examples of what companies are doing to make a difference in their local community or helping their employees. So whether that's donating eggs to local charities such as Riverview Eggs are doing, whether that's the RAIN project in Zambia with Kerry, whether it's Country Crest in Haiti or Lesotho, really working and helping to see how they can make a difference in communities, whether they're in Ireland or whether they're overseas. Likewise, from a health and nutrition point of view, reducing salt, reducing MSG, like the likes of Largo Foods are doing. So again, adding proof to what members are actually implementing and delivering on over a period of time. I suppose really that proof then leaves a requirement on board, be it to communicate about the Origin Green programme in, in the international marketplace. That's why we've developed an Origin Green Ambassador programme over the last number of years. And this afternoon here we have the current crew of ambassadors hidden down in the middle of the room there. And really what they are, they're the salespeople for Origin Green. They're doing a two-year programme, a Masters in Sustainable Business, out in the Smurfit Business School in UCD. But 18 months of that two-year program, they're out about in the marketplace, spending six-month work placements with companies like those logos you see on the sides of the screen. For us, that does two great things. Number one, it gives us a really good understanding of what the priorities are for those companies and how we can help them. And number two, it gives us six months to inform them about Origin Green, about what the Irish industry is doing to make a difference in terms of sustainable production. And each and every one of those company logos that you see on the screen have come to Ireland to see for themselves on the back of having an ambassador in their business to see for themselves how Origin Green works and what the Irish industry is actually doing in this regard. Another area in terms of communicating is all of our trade fairs are now Origin Green branded. So Origin Green is the umbrella brand for food and drink from Ireland. This is what we stand for. This is how we produce. This is how we're working to get better over a period of time. We've come a long ways in three years, but I think we're probably only getting started. We knew at the start that this was going to be a long-term program. I certainly think I'll have a lot more grey hairs by the time we get to the end of it. It's a long, long-term program. We've made a good start as far as we've got so far. What we're looking ahead is we have five priorities of what we want to focus on in the next number of years. Number one, we want to see how we can lower the environmental footprint even further in terms of how we produce our food and drink products. So we're going to be prioritising emissions. We're going to be looking more at biodiversity, looking more at water quality, see what we can do to drive impact there and demonstrate the credentials we have in those areas. We're certainly looking at seeing in the broader context of sustainability how we can enhance our impact on society. That's why we're going to have a much stronger focus on the whole area of health and nutrition in all of our company plans from here on in. We're going to be looking at how we can use the Irish market to create a showcase for sustainable production. As part of that, we're now developing a retail and food service sustainability charter that will see retailers become part of the program in the same way as food manufacturers are. So we'll have a situation on the Irish market where farm or manufacturing and the point of sale will be all part of the Origin Green program. Likewise, collaborating and innovating are key. We recently held a global sustainability forum here in Dublin where we had nearly 400 delegates from 19 countries get together for two days to say, well, these are the challenges we're all facing. What can we do about it? How do we progress on some of these issues over a period of time? And the reason for having it in Ireland was to position Ireland at the centre of that conversation. And the final thing on the Irish market is to share the vision. 
Origin Green is and will remain a business to business brand. But we feel that the Irish market is a little bit different. So that's why we're developing a public engagement campaign to let the general public know for what Origin Green is trying to do and how the Irish industry is getting behind it so that consumers and the general public will feel that there's a sense of pride about what we're trying to do as an industry and give that level of support that we need to develop the programme further over a period of time. So to finish up, I suppose, why are we doing all of this? We're doing this, number one, to save resources. To save resources to minimise our impact on the environment, but also to end up with an industry that's as efficient as we can possibly make. We're doing this to build the reputation of the Irish food and drink industry. You see the ambitions for FoodWise 2025, we're going to need to find more markets, more customers, and we're going to need to be able to demonstrate clearly than ever before how we produce in a responsible manner. If we can do that, if we can build a reputation, then we're going to be able to build a preference and win business to deliver on the targets set out in FoodWise 2025. So I'm going to leave it at that, Connor. I, I hope I give you some level of idea where we've got to and where we're trying to head with the programme. And thank you very much for your attention.